Well, at least it's still better than Gotti. Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Capone. This movie is directed by Josh Trank, who previously directed Chronicle and Fantastic Four. This movie stars Tom Hardy and Linda Cardellini. Capone tells the story of infamous gangster Al Capone. This movie is set in the last year of his life. He served his time in Alcatraz prison, and when he was deemed not a threat, they released him. But he's been suffering from dementia because he contracted syphilis at a young age, and so is now his mind is going. And this film tells the final year of his life. Now, Capone going in, I thought it was going to be kind of like how the newest incarnation of The Lone Ranger was, or The Irishman. A film where you had an aged character reflecting back to when they were younger, kind of like Gangster Number no. 1, where majority of the movie was then when they were younger, and then maybe you'd pick up later when they were older, but that's not the case here. Here, we get majority of Al Capone being immobilized, not being able to talk, not being able to speak, not being able to move a whole lot on his own. We get glimpses of his past, and though they are entertaining, you wish there were more of that in this movie. So Tom Hardy is a really good actor, and he's good in this movie too. But because he doesn't do a whole lot, except for grumble and kind of do like a Nick Nolte, you know, oh, yeah, come on, like when he talks, that's, that's a Tom Hardy thing. But that's not something that we needed in this movie. Tom Hardy's the best part of this film. He keeps you engaged, but it's because he plays this character so well. The story isn't that entertaining. I mean, you keep watching, but only because you're waiting for something to happen. If it didn't have a good supporting cast, I probably would have turned this movie off a lot sooner. Now, I finished the whole film, and I felt lackluster after watching it. Linda Cardellini as May, Al's wife, she is the only one that you, I guess, sympathize for. It reminded me a lot of, in the movie, The Theory of Everything. You have the Felicity Jones character of Stephen Hawking's wife, and you kind of feel for her, all the things she has to go through, taking care of her ailing husband. So Linda Cardellini does a good job having to put up with Al's, Al's outbursts, and him, you know, making a mess of himself, drooling, knocking things over, and losing control of his bowels. But aside from that, you're just watching to see what happens. They introduce things where, you know, the doctor comes to see him, the FBI gets involved, Al has these hallucinations and visions of things that may or may not be there, including people and events, but they don't go anywhere. At one point, you're watching this vision or this flashback of young Al Capone, and you're like, am I watching The Sopranos again? Because I feel like I'm watching one of those dreams, not where Tony has a dream that moves the plot forward, but one of those dreams that makes you go, what am I watching? That's how I felt in some of this movie. Yeah, it incorporated things from Al Capone's real life, including the rumors and myth that he buried a whole bunch of money somewhere, and, you know, things involving his kids... But other than that, you're not really interested. This was a lot like when I watched the movie Vice with Christian Bale. I enjoyed the story and I appreciated the effort that was put into making this film because filmmaking is hard, but I was left wondering, why was this story told? I appreciate seeing an old Al Capone, even though I would have much rather seen a younger Al Capone played by Tom Hardy. We get him in one scene playing young Al Capone. And it's really, it's really enthralling, but it's fleeting. Yeah, we've seen Al Capone portrayed by Robert De Niro and Ben Garza and Sylvester Stallone and a couple others, but you want to see young Al Capone. Yes, it's been done to death. And yes, this take of Al Capone is refreshing in the sense that we haven't seen it before, but it gives us a boring movie as a result. So because of that, I'm going to give Capone a C-. minus. The acting is good, but you're not really left with a whole lot. So until next time, guys, see ya.